Welcome, you guys. Welcome, welcome tonight to our Power Thoughts uh, on our weekly focus, which I'm really excited about, uh, which is called the trials, you guys. I mean, every time I say that word, I'm kind of like, Whoa, I get a little squirmy because I immediately start to think of many, many, many. I'm looking at my notifications, make sure everything is on. Many, many trials uh, that I have been in myself. And I guarantee you uh, that especially after our gathering on Monday, and if you've not watched it, I need you to go and watch it. I guarantee you have been thinking of some trials as well. And so with that, you guys, I definitely want to make sure that we've got great sound and got great video, everything. It's great. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then I'm going to do some shout outs here, you know, as well. Let me get my glasses on so that I can make sure everybody is welcome. That's joining us. First of all, Miss April, ah, talk about a topic for you, sister. <laughs> The trials we go through in business, man. Woo, we're trying to climb the ladder for the dream. So I'm so glad you're here, April. I know Mr. Reggie is probably right next to you as well. So welcome tonight. Welcome, Sister Dina. So glad that you've made it back home safe. And thank you, Q Dog, for your help, for helping me to make sure sound and everything is good to go. Miss Eva, Eva, top fan in the house, you guys. So excited that you're here. And I know you guys can't see my eyes, but you'll see them here in a second. I just want to make sure I can see this little small phone right here with everybody I'm doing shout outs to right now. And then also welcome Miss Rachel, Sister Rachel, girl, you know I love you. Welcome, welcome. Oh my God, and the beautiful Miss Mia is on live with us tonight. So glad you joined. You guys, if you could do me a favor, and what I'm going to do as well before we even get started is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit share, you guys. And now a second ago, it wouldn't let me share it to my personal page. So let me see if I can do that now because I really want to share it and invite others that are going to join us. Let's see here, share to an event. It's not letting me share to my Tracy Casey Ron page. I know what I have to do. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to come over here and hopefully you guys aren't hearing any loud noises here. But if you guys can go and share this, there we go, share. And let's make sure I can. It may not let me. There we go, share on your timeline. What, what? Yes, I'm so excited. So I'm going to put join me now. There we go. And I'm going to hit post. All righty, share it to my timeline. We are good to go. Again, you guys, welcome uh, for joining me this evening uh, for what to me is going to be a great uh, focus, which is the trials. And what we do on Tuesday night, you guys, as you know, if you joined us last Tuesday, it is truly where all I do is just go down, uh, you guys, and I do nothing but bring the power thoughts to our weekly focus. And so again, if you've joined me, please hit share so that in case there's others that want to join us tonight or if they're going to watch it later on this evening or even tomorrow, they can hop on. Okay. Again, just hit share you guys. And so a couple of things that I want to do is I want to make sure that I always get an opportunity to do the things I'm supposed to do on this end as a checklist. And so with that, I want to make sure that I do my little intro because I didn't do the intro intro. So I'm going to do that you guys. And we'll be right back as we dive in to the power thoughts Tuesday nights. You guys, oh my goodness, who do I have calling me? Oh my goodness, it's Boogie calling me, you guys, to the Power Thoughts for our weekly focus uh, this week, you guys, which is called Trials. And I'll be right back, you guys. Uh -huh. Best 
All right, you guys, I'm so glad again that you've joined me this evening for our power thoughts. Um, man, I'm going to sit here and tell you as I was getting ready uh, for tonight and just sitting here, I had to kind of tell myself, my goodness, uh, Tracy, all you got to do is just go down a list. Uh, there are so many things that you could share when it comes to this. Because I can guarantee you in our lifetime, maybe even right now, uh, we go through trials. And as we talked about on Monday, and again, if you didn't watch that, I need you to go and watch it. Uh, we talked about there's two different types of trials. Uh, there is the trials we go through uh, in our life when it comes to things such as relationships, uh, dealing with family, dealing with health, dealing with finances, uh, dealing with our mindset and limiting beliefs, our paths. And man, boy, is it not something when it comes to, you know, our faith and the trials we go through there, or even when it comes to truly standing in, understanding, accepting, and not moving when it comes to our identity and our self-worth. Uh, and then there are trials when you feel like you're being persecuted. I'm just going to say it like that. When you feel like people are after you, they're giving you havoc, they are backstabbing you, they're putting you on blast, uh, they're causing issues in your life, issues in your sleep, issues at your work, issues everywhere you go. You feel like you're in a constant trial by a court. <laughs> or you are in a constant trial by other people watching. And I've coached many people. We can do an amen on that when we've been there where people not only want to sit there and put you through something, they want to make sure other people see it as well. Or they just don't want to deal with you. They want to make it a spectacle or they don't want to just put you through something and deal with the one issue. They want to go and affect your whole entire life and every part of your being. I guarantee you, we have been there. Okay. And again, whether you just came out of it. It's something you went through two years ago. And let me tell you, when you go through that kind of trial, man, somebody brings it up. You do one of those moments like, uh, cause you still feel it. <laughs> You're still feeling that. Cause I know I got a couple that I mean, I'm still feeling those. I even still reference those sometimes because you don't forget those. And maybe there's even those of you right now, as we are speaking, while we are on live or you're watching this video because it's gotten to you because everybody shared Okay, everybody hit shared that you're sitting there saying, Tracy, I'm being persecuted right now. Woo, come on. Or Tracy, I am just getting out on the other side. And man, what I feel in that moment, what I feel right now, my heart, my body, my mind, my willpower, my belief and my faith is all tore up. Tracy, what do I do? And so what I want to do is focus on, you guys, a couple of things. You know, when the Lord brought to me this uh, whole eight-week series, um, he gave me all of the topics in advance. He gave me what the speaking points were. And what I've found week to week is as I focus on what he's given me, there's more meat on that, like I said, than potatoes. There's more that we can chew on. And there's more things that I think about. I uh, mean, you guys just watch my Monday movement. If you didn't, you need to go and watch it. Where I just told you about the trial that I went through. Okay, just dealing with it from Thursday night and what the Lord was teaching me in that moment, what he needed me to know in that moment, what he needed me to not just know it, but to go, uh, I'll never forget it, Lord. I'm going to remember this moment is when it comes to the trials, when it comes to those moments of adversity, when it comes to those moments when we feel like all we're doing is swinging and our arms are tired, when we feel like just when we go and get a break, here comes another wave, or we feel like it's one thing after another, or my God, Tracy, five to six things are going on at one time. It is all about the trials of life and the trials of persecution that we go through. You know, but again, that was just like Jesus, what he went through. You know, we know that through the Bible. If you don't, then you need to read the gospel. He went through the same thing. He said, this is the life plan, y'all. This is what this is going to look like. But he also said it was going to look like at the end, though, too. And he also made some serious promises that we've got to stand on in moments of trials and persecutions and things that we go through, that we got to know that even though it's here in front of us, that the Lord is going to get us through. And in that moment that we feel it, in that moment that we're scared, in that moment we're overwhelmed, or man, let me tell you, when that crock side of you comes out and you really want to tell her what you think, or you really want to tell her what you think, or you really just want to go crazy because you know what is going on is something that is ripping you inside. We need to take a breath in that moment. We need to take a moment. 
We can even take a time out if we need to, to compose ourselves and come to a place where we truly remember, wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, who am I? Come on, let, let me remember who I am. We're going to talk about that here in a second. And then let me remember what is happening and why it is happening. But let me also remember no matter how intense this is, no matter how much it is knocking me to my knees and is changing my whole universe and my atmosphere, I am still a child of God and my God is still on the throne. See, we got to go there. And we look at the arrow and we look at different moments where Oliver, and I want to stick with the main character, found himself in situations of trials and persecution in the trials he went through, not just in his life. I mean, he ended up having trials with the ex-girlfriend. He, first of all, he had to deal with the issue that he took off on a boat with his girlfriend's sister. Come on. <laughs> Talk about persecution. You're going to be persecuted, brother, and you deserve to be persecuted. And it followed him everywhere he went for the longest time, that all people thought of him, all people, when they looked at him, what they saw was that person, that troublemaker, that playboy, that billionaire who didn't take serious anything and who was a cheater and a womanizer. See, one of the trials that we're going to go through, you guys, are the trials of our past. I'm going to sit here and tell you. Those things in our past and our identity in our past and the things that we created that we've got to maybe break down because this is what we built before. This is what other people saw before. This is the way we did things. Here comes the consequences. First of all, we got to break that down. We got to deal with those things. See, we can no longer act the same way. We can no longer react the same way. See, when things hit us, when things come at us, we can no longer approach things the same way. If you know you're struggling with something and you feel overwhelmed, but your status quo is to always retreat, is to always give up, is to always go and hide or to always go and flee the scene or to always act like, hey, I don't have any responsibilities. I don't have anything to do and I'm just going to go. Then I'm going to sit here and tell you that you're going to have the same trials happen in your life. And not only are you going to be dealing with those trials, let me tell you what, every single action that you do has a reaction. Every single thing that you create and you build has a reaction. So when it comes to trials in your life, you don't just stick to say, hey, it got done to me so I can act this kind of way. Uh-uh. Or this is what happened over here so I'm justified in what I do. Uh-uh. Because everything that swings at us, remember, what are we swinging back at it? And so as we kind of dive in, and again, I, I want to just kind of welcome everybody who has joined us later on. You know, thank you for joining. Woo, okay, Jacqueline. Hey, what's up, Jackie Prince? So glad you're here. Hey, sister. You know, want to welcome you guys and see if there's anybody else that's on. I know we got a couple people, and I'm sorry I didn't get to see you. I logged off, but welcome, welcome. And again, please share. So what I want to do is I want to go down a couple of things. Number one, we must know immediately that trials just don't happen to some people, it happens to everybody. Some of us take the trials that we go through and that happen in our life as it's just happening to us. The next thing I'm gonna tell you about trials that I wanna start off with is that when you were feeling persecuted, it's almost kind of like when a child is bullied. There's two things happening here. The one that's being bullied, there's an issue here that we got to deal with, but there's also an issue that's happening in the one that's doing the bullying. See, there is two pieces here. There are two things here. And sometimes when we're in trials, we just, and I'm going to use the word, fail to look at the other side. We fail to look at what's happening in their life. We fail to look at what's going on with them. We're feeling the way we are. We're being hurt. We're being persecuted. We're being broken down. Or this is too hard. We fail to look at the other thing. Sometimes that's even in our business. We feel like this is difficult. This is hard. So we want to go and do this because the trials of building a business, taking something from nothing and building it is intense. And the moment that we feel challenged and overwhelmed, and I can't tell you, I've seen this with women and men. They just want to say, you know what, this is not for me. This is not something that I can do. Because we're not getting out of it what we need to feel in that moment. It's not making us feel great in that moment. And we again go point fingers at other things. 
including the ones that are doing the attacking or the ones that are causing the issue. But one of the very first things that we've got to do when we're on trial, and this is where a good attorney comes in at. See, a good attorney just doesn't build up your case. Come on, that was good, Lord. A good attorney just doesn't build up your case. A good attorney who's about winning your case is going to do what, you guys? They're going to look at the evidence on the other side. They're going to study what is happening with the other person. They're going to ask for even cross-referencing and ask for data from the other side. They're going to want to learn and understand and to see both sides of the situation. Because only when you see both sides of the situation can you come up with a plan of solution, let alone strategy, to end up winning. And that means even when there's bickering going on, if you're so busy making your point, you're so busy defending yourself, you're so busy making sure this person hears you out and hmm, I showed her, I showed him and I don't put them in their place. I need to go be this person with fangs or claws and I tore them up. Let me sit here and tell you, be careful, be real careful. You may have tore them up and I brought this on another message, but who you were in that moment, what you did in that moment there's nothing to be proud of. There's always two sides to every situation. There's always two things that you need to look at in every situation. And the most effective times of being in trials, things we go through in life and being persecuted is when you can get outside of your emotions. You can stop being so self-absorbed and in yourself and you look at the other side. Because let me tell you, when you look at the other side, what happens? You learn something. You learn something not only when it comes to the situation, but you also become enlightened. You get new information. And on top of that, you become smarter and you become wiser. And the ultimate goal is you grow. This is what happens in moments like that. So again, trials happen to everybody. Happens to everybody all the time. Trials just don't happen to you. And remember how I started this power thought tonight. If we could just remember in that moment who we are, whose we are, who's still on the throne and how he's for us and not against us, we can look at that situation completely different. We can maybe even go and take it, like I said on Monday, to him and ask him what to do about it and get the real power source activating in the situation before we go open our mouth, we go react. We go throw firebombs at it. This is one of the things that we've really got to come to and we really got to know in all circumstances, in all of them. Doesn't mean that in times of persecutions, they're not guilty. Doesn't mean that at all. But in that moment, as we found with Oliver Queen time and time again, for the longest time until finally he got it, and it was when he got put in jail. <laughs> Come on. Prior to that, he was reacting off of his emotions. He was reacting off of the situation. It, it was true. They were the enemy. They were bad guys. They need to be taken down. But it was only when he looked at both sides of the situation could he even understand his opponent what they were going to do, what they were going to maybe do next. Or even in looking at this situation, sometimes we got to look at it because we may find that there's a repeat offender in here. And we may find that the repeat offender is us. That because of something that we did again and kept doing, we caused the issue. Doesn't mean that what their reaction is, talked about that a second ago, wasn't wrong. But we find that we were the ones, the culprit, who either through lack of communication, lack of actions, lack of upholding boundaries, or sitting there being quiet when we needed to speak up, that we contributed to situations, or even hoping that it would just go away. I ain't gonna deal with it. I'm not gonna face it. I'm not gonna say anything. It would just go away. And so with that, you guys, a couple of things here. When it comes to trials, I need you to know, as I said a second ago, in life, those things are gonna happen all the time. Now, there's big trials with big convictions and there's small ones, okay? There's different size of trials and different things that you go through in life. What I said on Monday, I meant it on Monday, that we've got to look at those trials that we go through as things that the Lord uses to grow us, to mold us, to deal with us, to convict us, to change us, to alter us. For what? For his plan. It's to get us to lean on him. It's to get us to realize that in those moments, who we are, who we're not, 
and who he is and how the only way to persevere and to get through is going to be through him. Like I said on Monday, we can't leap over it. We can't go around it, and we sure can't cover it up and we sure can't turn around and ignore it. We got to face it. But if we know God is on our side, there is nothing to fear. And if we know that we are through him and align with him, there is nothing we're not going to gain, but we got to go through it. We got to go through that firewalk. We can't just keep tapping out or we can't just be showing out all the time. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And we can't be putting it on blast on Facebook either. That is not the way to deal with or gossiping to other people about it. That's not the way to deal with it. Okay, so when we look at these trials in life, these are regular things that we're going to go through. To me, I'm going to call it something that Oliver would call it. To me, that's called sparring. (laughs) The trials we go through in life is what I'm going to call sparring. It is the things that God is using for us to spar against so that we could truly become the warrior and the king and queen that we were designed to be. Because you can't be a king or a queen if you don't know how to war. You don't know how to fight because the first time that adversity comes up against you, what's going to happen? They're going to take your whole kingdom and everything in it, including your dreams and everything you've worked for. So the Lord puts us through sparring to teach us how to be stronger, to strengthen our willpower, our belief, our identity and our faith, faith in ourselves, and faith in him. And so a couple of things I want to say about sparring and then we're going to go to the next thing is when you're sparring, Okay. Remember you are sparring. Okay. It is so important that in those moments that you air it through and air it out, that you don't tap out. You will never learn what you need to learn. If all you do in the first minute say, I quit, I'm done. Because let me tell you how daddy works. And a lot of you guys are about to say an amen. He will allow you to repeat it over and over and over and over again. Our father doesn't remove the obstacle. Matter of fact, sometimes what he does, and if this has happened to you, testify on this live feed, is he'll keep you in that same situation until you get it right. He won't grow you. He won't expand you. He won't give you the desires of your dream, and he sure won't give you something that he's going to trust you with if he feels that this is a level, just like a PlayStation game, that no matter what, when the ugly demon comes around the corner with the tongue that comes out at you, I'll never forget that game. I think it was an Atari game back in the day. I'm still traumatized by it. I was more scared of that thing coming out, and two, this tongue is sucking on my head. I was so scared that, man, let me tell you what, I needed to get through that level. Ooh, Lord, that was good. My only way that I can get past that was to get through it, to accomplish it, to achieve it in order to go to the next level. That means what happened at this level, I've grown from that, which is why it's so important that when it comes to sparring, here's the thing, you're learning lessons in life. These are lessons for you not to repeat or do again. These are things that you need to be writing either in a journal or you need to be recording it or putting it on a three by five card, putting it on your mirror to remember the lessons that you have learned. And maybe what we need to do instead of the lessons we've learned, we need to go ahead and put what are the consequences if we do it again to remind ourselves of that moment. What happened when we did what happened next? We maybe need to remember those things. Okay, the other thing during that time is when you are sparring, don't always feel like you got to fight. Don't always feel like you got to speak to and approach everything. Sometimes in sparring, it's about being quiet. It's about pausing and waiting. It's about assessing. And it's about not moving at the speed of your enemy or your challenge. You make it move to you. This is so important. I can't tell you how many people will say, well, aren't you going to do something? Aren't you going to say something? And what I say to people, I know they freak out. I say, you know, I'm going to wait for the Lord to prepare that at my table. I understand what's going on. And it may mean that I'm in hot water right now. And I've got people doing this left and right. And this is going on or this is going to happen because of it. But you know what? I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait for him to show me what he wants to do. And what he wants me to do I won't have to get up out of my seat and grab my sword. He will literally deliver it unto my own hand and put it at my table. 
that all I got to do is take my fork and my knife and start cutting. Real deal. But the thing that I did in sparring is knowing when to fight, when not to fight. When to speak, when not to speak. And maybe you don't go backwards, but you can move left or right to get out of its way. This is what trials, things that happen to you. You know, it's just like in a relationship with a husband and a wife. Sometimes we feel like we got to speak to everything. That if we don't speak to it and say something, they got the better end. They're the ones who won. They're the ones who are right. Or, or that fear factor that if we don't speak to it, they're going to keep doing it again. And we're going to be hurt again. That's not true. There's a time to speak, a time not to speak. There's a time to fight, a time not to fight. There's a time of war, and there's a time not for war. We can go to Ecclesiastes, and it speaks all those things. There's a time for everything. There's a time to build and a time to uproot. There's a time to live and a time to die. There's a time for everything, which means also when it comes to trials, all of them, the ones we go through in life and persecution, it is so important that you strategize. Don't just go react and do and do anything. I can't tell you how many people, you know, I get on a coaching call with me. This is, this is what we're doing in life. And they go and do all of this. They go and say, well, okay, so let me tell you what I did. But didn't get counsel, didn't think it through, allowed their emotions to take control, allowed their anger and their resentment and shame to take over. Okay, you guys just heard what I brought on the Monday movement. And what does that do? That accomplishes nothing. That doesn't grow you, expand you, and it sure doesn't get you through those challenges in life that you need to get through and overcome. Okay, again, the only way that we can face trials is to get through it. But the key thing, as I said in the beginning, is remember that God's going to get us through. That in those moments, if we focus on him, I don't care what's going on, if we even go to him. You know, on Monday, uh, when I was telling you guys what all had happened from Thursday night, man, I packed up and went to a hotel and went before God. We got to talk. Because in that moment, I needed to talk to him. I needed to really think on what is it, Lord, in this situation that you're trying to tell me or you want me to see. Which means the next thing when it comes to trials, things you go through in life and trials or persecution, Always know there's always a lesson in it for you. There's a lesson there. But know there's always one for you. You never get out of a situation and it was just about the other person. See, our Lord and Savior is a Lord and Savior that when it comes to teaching, he isn't just going to focus on one child when he can focus on both. There is something in there for you. And that's why it's so important in those moments to get counsel. Now, we're going to talk next week about who's on your left because who you get counsel from is so crucial and so important. If you get it from those that are not able to understand, relate, that aren't at the fight or in the fight with you or fighting as well, and me and Quint just talked about that. We talked about the difference that we realize that him and I are. He's a commander. So am I, but I'm a more 80% fighter and warrior. He's more commander, which means when it comes to things that are happening in the front line, I need to be talking and getting counsel from those that are really in the front line, not those that are supporting me, there for me. It needs to be those that are at the front line warring. Okay, another Avenger <laughs> or another DC comic book hero. It needs to be someone that is in the front line warring because they get it, they understand, they speak my language. So it's so important that you understand that in every situation, there is a lesson there for you. There is something that you can always walk away from. I guarantee you and say, what could I have done differently? What can I do better? Or what do I need to know for next time? There's always a lesson. Okay, moving forward, you guys. Victories and losses. I'm going to tell you you're going to have both. But the thing that I want to say most about this is don't just embrace the losses. Man, I need you to celebrate them. Don't just embrace the losses. 
I need you to celebrate the losses sometimes more than the victories because of what we learn and what we gain. The Lord said that it is in our brokenness that he does his best work. It is in our weakness that he does his best work where his strength can be glorified. It is in our empty vessel that the Lord can use more of. It is when we humble ourselves to him that the Lord can lead and lead the way and keep leading the way. See, it is when we lose ourselves, as Paul says, we die to ourselves when we lose and we submit ourselves and surrender, as I said in the post. In order to be saved, we then become redeemed and we become free from anything that is out there. So when it comes to victories and losses. Yes. Note your victories. Note them. Note them well. Woo. Pat yourself on the back. Go get some ice cream if you need to. But the things that I want us to shift our mindset on is embracing and celebrating more of the losses. Because let me tell you, nobody lose anything if they're not out there trying to gain something. Woo. Say it one more time. Nobody loses anything if they're not out there trying to do something, they're not working on their marriage. They're not working on helping their kids get to the next level. They're not working on changing their bank account. They're not working on trying to create a business that they could leave a legacy or go and use that income to bless others. You know, they're, if they're not trying to be a single dad or a single mom, no matter what the situation is, you know what, it's okay because you know what, they still have me and we gonna make it okay. See, you cannot, have losses if you're not out there doing something. You can't have trials if you're not trying to be somebody. You can't go through afflictions if you're not out there going against the enemy to say you're a liar and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna take what you deliver. You cannot go through things. So to me, it's those losses that I now know how to celebrate. It's those losses that now speak to me the most. It's the losses that even bring me closer to the Lord because I go to him and I learn and I become stronger and more equipped, but I hear him more. He works in me more. He gives me more. It it is in my losses that I truly gain more than my victories. We need to embrace losses more. But the next thing when we lose, God, we just got to be careful not to stay in a losing mentality. See, that's where the problem is at. Some of us, when we lose, we stay there. We think we're losers. The big old L on the forehead. No, it needs to be the Lord on our forehead. That in those moments, we're reminded. We're reminded of things. We're reminded of our feelings and our heart and our desires. But I mean, let me tell you what, something always happens to me when I lose and I get back up. Woo! Oh, 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 oh my God. It's like a freshness of a new again. It's like a renewal. When I'm down and I get back up. You ever have that where you put something away or you go and just say, I'm not going to do it, but then you go and decide to do it again. Man, nothing's as good as those first couple of weeks or that next 24, 48 hours. You're on fire. You, you, you're on fire. The losses are the things that we need to embrace more because if we can embrace the losses, they will no longer devastate us. And the enemy has lost his edge. His competitive edge is we get devastated by losses and pain and issues. But again, as I said in the beginning, if we go to the Lord and we give that to him in exchange, he will keep giving us the keys to the Lamborghini. Come on, y'all. We need to be driving that Lamborghini. We need to know that God says, I'm always here for you. I will always renew you. I will always be there when you're down on your knees and on the ground to help you get back up. And that's the best part is that renewing of our spirit, that drinking of the water, that pouring of new oil on our body. I mean, I cannot tell you when Oliver had a big loss, oh my God, wow. He was the next thing that I wanna to talk to you about. He was relentless, nothing. He cranked it up and went harder. Woo! The enemy's over there kicked back thinking he beat the arrow. And the arrow was down, but he wasn't out. And he was in his lair and he was thinking with his lefties. And when he came back, 
let me tell you what, the enemy couldn't run, the situation couldn't hide, it was going down. This is what trials do for us. It gives us clarity. When we lose and we, and we go through persecutions and we go through all those things, let me tell you what, it's because of the persecutions of me losing my hair is what got me to fight to be somebody, to become more, to get people to see me as more. My loss of my hair is what the Lord used to get me to be in a place to fight, to not just take that, to not just be a bald girl where they call me Piggly Wiggly and all these other names. No, there was this fight within me. And every time I went home and I was crying, every time I was losing, God was doing something in me. He was building me up. And to me, if you find yourself because you're going through trials in life or trials of persecution, you can't get out of the bed. I need you to dissect yourself. Go find who you were and where you're at and talk to yourself. And if you can't do that, then you better have somebody on your left that ain't going to care about your feelings being hurt. In that moment, in that moment right there, they're going to speak to you and they're going to tell you the truth. And they could care less if you don't talk to them for several days because of who you are. And because, again, trials happen to everybody. It is about our perspective and how we look at it. And it's about our perspective that we got to change because the enemy is expecting the same thing over and over, but he ain't expecting a difference. He's not expecting you to change it up. And he's not expecting you that even though he may continue to throw arrows your way for you to keep going. See, if we never stop, we get there. Come on, Lord. If we never stop... We get there. The thing is just not to keep going in circles. Like a navigation system, you're just going in circles. Turn left, turn left, turn the turn around, turn the turn around. Why are you doing circles, stupid? That's the navigation system. <laughs> Can you not hear? Why are you going the same way? This is what trials and tribulations do for us. And again, it's all about, I'll say one more time, remembering in that moment when it happens, who we are, whose we are, and that in all times he is with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us, but also making sure we go through that trial because he loves us that much and he knows who we are. He created us. He knows our worth and value. He's the one who molded us and the one who put the destiny and the purpose in us. He's the one who wrote our story. He did. He's the author. So he knows how the book's supposed to end. So he's like, oh, no, I know I made this book. It's going to end the way I wrote it. And I'll use whatever it takes in order to do it. Oliver became a superhero. Not because of all the victories he won. It was because of all the hell he went through and he didn't stop. He became a legend and inspired other people and accomplished things in his life because he never quit. And even though he was bruised up and even though the mission was hard, Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow, every single time, even with the mistakes he made, always rose again, always faced it. And for some of us, we may need to work on our emotions. We may need to work on ourselves. We may need to get counseling or therapy. We may need to heal. Because the other thing I'm going to tell you, don't go into a new trial when you still got all this stuff going on. You'll go take that into this trial and won't be able to see clearly this trial that is facing you. It'll be about all these other things and it ain't. And you'll lose just because. You'll be defeated by the enemy just because he knows you've got all these other things going on. And not only that, that wears you down and tires you down that even when you're trying to stand up and fight, you can't because you got too much baggage on your shoulder or on your back. Face and deal with those things. And again, it doesn't mean that you don't struggle. But as I said on Monday, God says, come to me. If you believe in me, then believe in me all the way. Come to me. Try me. Test me. And watch what I will do. And, and I won't wait, but I may not do it your way. 
Which brings me to the last two things. Sometimes in our trials that we go through in life, or trials of persecution, it doesn't turn out the way you want it. It doesn't turn out with the outcome that you wanted. It doesn't look like the way that you have envisioned and you're coming out bruised and afflicted and you're like, it shouldn't be this way. Let me tell you what. I brought an episode called Scars. If you didn't watch it, I need you to go find it on YouTube or you can find it, you know, on Facebook. Scars are a part of life, a part of history. Our whole nation has scars. And those scars are there for a reason. Yes, we got to tend to them and we got to heal them. But those scars are there for a reason. You know, I said this, and it may be in the recording that um, is hopefully going to get done by Friday. Um, but I love it is because Paul, the Apostle Paul, who really decided to face the trials of Christ. When the Lord showed up and asked him, why are you persecuting my people? And he decided that day to give his whole life and his mission, his skill sets, everything to Christ. He left there. And when he turned to face his mission, he turned and faced countless acts of trials and trials. <laughs> the trials he went through and the trials of persecution. And in a study that I was reading this week on Paul, I loved what he said. My scars are a symbol to show that I walked with Christ, that I didn't walk alone, and I didn't walk in my own flesh and my plan. Woo, that's deep. These are scars of Christ. He was thrown in jail several times. He was beaten so badly they left him for dead. He went through things in his life the thing that Paul never did is he never stopped. Even when he was in jail, he was still going. Even when you have things happen to you. I was coaching somebody this week, and she was talking about all these surgeries she's going to have to have. And I said, okay, great. Then that means you're going to be in bed, and there's a lot you can do with a laptop or an iPad. So let's get to work. And you could tell in that moment she was shaken by that because she had already decided that if all these surgeries she was going to have and she was going to be in bed, she couldn't do anything. And I said, um, no, that just means that you're isolated and you can get a lot of work done. You can still talk on the phone, can't you? Well, yeah. Okay. Can you still type? Well, yeah. Okay. And you can hold an iPad or a laptop? Yeah. Great. Then you can work. You can still do things. And in that moment, you could tell, and I love her. She was literally having a moment where she was shedding off some flesh. She's like, uh, you know, I never looked at it that way. I said, well, that's how we're going to look at it. And guess what? I'm holding you accountable. So when's your surgery? <laughs> you know, I told her if there's people out there with no legs, people out there with no arms, people out there with no sight, and we see what they can do. My God, so can you. This is truly where we got to change our perspective. In times of situations when things don't turn out the way we want to. And I've said this over and over. We got to look for the opportunities. We got to say, I don't care. I'm still going to figure out a way to get it done. No matter what. You know, there's a scene I'm going to end with. And I want you to go and watch it. And all eight episodes just got the notification from Netflix. They're all on Netflix. All eight, eight episodes. Eight seasons with all episodes. For the arrow on Netflix. If you're a Netflix subscriber, you can watch all of them for free. But I want you to go to an episode. It's season five. And it's episode 17 and 18. And this is when Oliver is getting his butt handed to him. This enemy is one step ahead of him all the way. Now, it's not Diaz, like I talked about on Monday, the demon. It ends up being the sidekick, the one before the demon. Woo! They, their whole goal is to tear you up so you never make it to the demon. <laughs> Come on. They got orders. He better not show up. The demon's like, he better not show up at my doorstep. You better take him out. This was Prometheus. He was the one. Okay, Prometheus and Chase. His name was Chase, but he went by Prometheus. He was the one that was supposed to just take Oliver out. And guess what his method was? It wasn't necessarily blows to the body. 
It was to mess with his mind. It was to mess with his mind so much that he doubted himself, no longer knew who he was, and his whole fight, belief, faith, willpower, everything that he had done would be forgotten and he would find himself back at the beginning again. See, that's what happens with some of us when we lose. We don't just lose here and stay here and move forward. We go all the way back to the beginning. We forget what we've done, who we are, what we've learned. We go all the way back to the beginning. And then we act like, oh my God, I'm never going to get there. Well, yeah, you're right. If you put your butt back at the beginning versus just taking a moment from where you are and picking back up again. He broke Oliver. And it took him many episodes for him to be able to regain his faith. And it wasn't until Prometheus got his son that that was the game changer. Oliver had to snap out of it. And all of a sudden, you see that superhero, you see that fighter rise again in order to save his son and save those that he loves. I don't think it needs to get to that. I don't think the enemy needs to take something crucial out of your life, like a loved one, a marriage, a child, your sense of security in your life, your future. I don't think that he deserves to have that. But he will if we don't realize that in moments and times when it's not how we want to, that's when the enemy strikes hard and strikes with our mind. We must, at all accounts, get up and fight again. And our center and our source is Christ. And so I love in this one scene with Diggle, who was to his left, I'm going to talk about Diggle and Felicity next week. I love what he says because Oliver forgot completely who he was. And Oliver ends up making this statement. And he says, I don't know who I am anymore. And I don't think I deserve anymore to wear the suit of the Green Arrow. Whew. I mean, we're talking, he forgot totally who he was. And Dig says, then if that is true, don't give up. Just work to be the man who deserves it back. Woo! God! If that's truly what you believe, then fine. Even then, then work at becoming the person who is. And that moment brought tears to my eyes. Because at that moment, he could have beat up Oliver. He said, no, I'm going to meet you where you at, bro. Okay, fine. You don't remember who you are. You don't feel like you deserve to be the Green Arrow. You've forgotten everything, your training, your worth, your value, what you've done, your successes, how you're an icon. You're a hero. People love you. People follow you. You inspire people. Okay, you forgot all that. <sighs> then fine. We ain't quitting. Then pick it up, put it on, and work to be the man who deserves to wear it. Then work to be the mom, work to be the dad, work to be the friend, work to be the owner, work to be the body and the vessel for Christ. Work then to be the one that you truly want to be. And let these trials that you go through and trials of persecution, use those as sparring, training, required training in order for you to become not just a superhero in all areas of your life to become a legend and have a legacy in it. So with that, you guys, I truly hope that you have gotten something from tonight because everything that we discussed are all things that applies to trials and relationships and family, with your health, dealing with the death of a loved one, you know, being devastated and not being able to get back up again, your finances, your career, your mindset, belief, self-worth, value and who you are, your identity of who you are. But as I said yesterday, all these things are used as sparring in order to grow you, to expand you and your territory, to start to give you a bulletproof mindset through Christ, to help you with your identity and your worth and your value, but to accept it and own it and not move, to grow you physically, to grow your emotional state of mind. As TJ Jake says, most people struggle following Christ not because they don't know the word, it's because of their emotional state of mind. Whoop, that's a whole other sermon. Let me tell you what, that was powerful when I heard that. And also your spiritual growth. 
so that in all those trials you go through, those of life and those of persecution, it ultimately builds the one thing that takes the enemy out, your faith, your faith in who you are, your faith in who he is and who what he is in you and what that now makes you. So I love you guys. Man, again, make sure you share this tonight. Make sure you share it with others, especially when it comes to trials in life. And again, I hope I said hi to everybody. There's so many people on. And if I didn't, man, I'm so sorry. You guys know how I'd love to shout you out. Hey, Monica. Hey, Mo. Hey, sis. So glad you're on. Man, there's so many. Genevieve, Genevieve, my heart. So glad you're on, sister. So glad you're on. I know there's several of you guys, and I didn't get to shout you out. But thank you for joining. And again, make sure you share it. And make sure you guys join me again. Thursday night's different. This is where I take a chapter. And all I'm going to do is read it for about seven, eight minutes. Okay, and then we're going to talk about it. And I love what you guys told me. T.A., in those moments, I'm not chatting. I'm just listening to the word. Or I'm actually there with my Bible reading it. Then that's just how we roll it out. Okay, but all I ask is when you log off and you hear me log off, oh man, she's logged off, is to go to that video and hit share so that somebody else can be empowered by the word as well, you guys. And so with that, make sure I've got everything ready to go. And I do. I love you guys. And I will see you Thursday night at 845 for the word and nothing but the word, you guys. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. 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 Check it out. Yo. Feel the rhythm on the bass bar. Better feel the rhythm on the bass bar. Hit me the drum and come the wrong one. Yes, man.